Yo oh guys, what's up? It's Fresh Reviews. I just got a package from my boy Nacho Customs. He wants me to do a early review and early impressions of the G-Wolves TS Wireless. So guys, just looking at what you get out of the box, you do get the standard G-Wolves packaging. The mouse comes in the tin box, which I think is an awesome little touch. Um, the mouse does come with a wireless receiver. The USB dongle does have a antenna for a stronger signal. Um, I do, of course, think that the antenna looks kind of uh, cheesy, but uh, honestly, this thing could look like anything. If you're gonna tell me that I get a stronger signal or a better performance using a uh, antenna on my USB dongle, I'm gonna do it. That's just the type of person that I am. And uh, the, the mouse does come with extra skates, and it does come with the uh, paracord that is detachable for the uh, charging cable, uh, micro USB. Um, I do think that the paracord is on the thicker side and it is a little floppy. I don't prefer thick paracords like this. It's almost uh, thick like a shoelace cable. Um, I prefer uh, cables that are a little bit thinner. And you do get the brush um, in the box. I'm assuming that that is to clean the holes in the mouse, get rid of any gunk, anything like that. I honestly would never use this. Um, I'd rather use a microfiber cloth or, you know, some other sort of cleaning solution. Um, I just don't really think that the brush is very practical. Overall, the texture of the mouse actually feels pretty good. I do think that the honeycomb side does uh, collect quite a bit of moisture and become a little bit slippery. The top of the mouse is very smooth. And likewise, I think that if you live in a humid climate or you have sweaty hands, it is a texture that might accumulate a little bit of moisture um, and become a little bit slippery. It's not too, too bad, um, but I did notice it in game. As far as the texture of the mouse goes, they do have corresponding um, <clears throat> grip tape that comes in the box. It does kind of match the colorway. I would hate to pay extra for a colorway and then put uh, grip tape over it. Uh, but the grip tape that comes in the box actually is quite good. I think it's probably, uh, well, not probably, but it is the best grip tape that any company gives you in the box, in my opinion. Um, it's got a little bit of uh, heft to it and it just feels good. So guys, the sensor is a 3335. I do have the TS next to the Xenix Titan GX wireless that has a PAW3370 sensor. I can say that uh, the 3335 sensor in the G-Wolves TS wireless does seem to perform extremely well. The mouse is responsive, the mouse tracking. I had no issues with spin outs. I had no issues with tracking, flicking, anything in that regard as far as, as, far as gaming performance. The only issue I maybe noticed is uh, the liftoff distance seems to be a little bit higher on the HTS wireless than the Xenix. Um, I do think that both mice are great. I think that both sensors are great. I think that gaming performance um, should not be affected in any major way, swapping between a 3335 and the 3370. So guys, I am a former Counter-Strike 1.6 professional player. My name in CS 1.6 was Kimber. I played Cal Invite for about six or seven seasons, and I played in top-ranked American and worldwide teams. Um, to test mice, I like to hop into Valorant. I like to literally just hop into the game that I'm mainly playing and test out the mouse. I think that uh, practicing in the game that you're actually focusing on is a little bit more practical than playing aim labs. I like to test the mouse for spin outs. I like to test the sensor, make sure everything is clear, everything is okay. Uh, for the purposes of the HTS wireless, the 3335 sensor had no issues. I like to test controlled hits in death matches because um, I, you know you really get a feel for the responsiveness of the clicks and responsiveness of the mouse. I think it's a great way to test the feeling of the switches and. Uh, I, I did not have any issues with the HTS wireless. I thought the switches felt great and uh, the responsiveness was fantastic. So now the other issue in AIM is tracking. Um, so it's not all about controlled hits when you're playing games like um, Valorant, Apex, Counter-Strike, Fortnite when you are spraying, right? You have some people that like to snipe and they have those controlled hits. You have some people who like to, you know, single tap or burst. Uh, but when it comes to tracking, one of the things that's very, very important is the size, shape, and weight of the mouse. 
And I think that's where the credence comes, that shape of ice is really, you know, still an integral factor of why you should be looking at a certain mouse to purchase. For me, the Hiti S wireless is just a little too small. Um, the micromanagement of my movements was a little fidgety wow. in the sense that I would either over aim because the mouse was so small and so light, or I would under aim. Um, I was able to correct it. I'm still able to play good with the mouse. Um, it's just my personal preference and my subjective feeling with the mouse that it just wasn't really as enjoyable of an experience as something that's a little more relaxed. And that's just because the mouse for me, with my size hands, is a little on the smaller side. Um, so my grip was a little more aggressive as far as what I typically like to play at uh, as far as a claw or hybrid uh, fingertip or palm grip. Overall though, the mouse had no issues with tracking, no issues with clicking, the sensor felt great, the responsiveness of the switches and the mouse are phenomenal. And if you're looking for a small mouse, this could be it. To kind of get to my point, guys, the mouse for me is just on the little bit of the small side. So I grip it with a kind of a relaxed claw grip. Um, and my ring finger likes to sit kind of close to the right uh, mouse switch. Um, and I actually do accidentally sometimes, just with that little movement, um, accidentally activate right click with my ring finger. Um, which for me was um, easily fixable. I mean, once you're conscious of it, you kind of like actively try to avoid it. Um, but it is something that for me causes the mouse to have just a little bit of an uncomfortable grip. Um, I do prefer to have something that has more of a hand feel so that I can have more of a relaxed grip and less of an aggressive. You know, the, for, for me, the smaller I go, the more aggressive my claw gets. Um, and I just don't find it comfortable. I find that when I'm a little more relaxed, I'm a little more, um, I'm a little better with my tracking and I am just as good with my flicking. I think that if you are in the market for a smaller mouse or you have a smaller hand, this is probably my favorite shape out of all of the small mice. I think that I like this more than the Final Mouse Cape Town. I like it more than the Razor Viper Mini. Um, I like it more than the G305 and you know the list goes on and on and on as far as uh, small mice like the MM711 which is probably the best one to kind of compare this to. Um, but I do prefer the HIT-S over all of the other small mice on the market right now and certainly if I was in the market for a small, uh, small mouse I think I, that I would probably stick with wireless. The copy on my scale, guys, is 60 grams, and I think out of the box with most mice, whatever the advertised weight is, you do usually get about a plus or uh, minus two gram differential. Um, that's just standard deviation in all products. So I think that you know if they're advertising the mouse at 59 grams, um, you could get one that's 57. You could get one that is uh, 61. Uh, but 60 grams mouse is an awesome weight for a wireless mouse, especially in something that is this small. To give you guys an idea of the clicks and how they sound, um, I do believe that just looking through the casing, I do have a smoky black uh, switch. So I do think that there are kales in this, kale 8.0s. Uh, but here is a listen to my left click and the right click. DPI button, little mouse, mouse four, mouse five, little mouse, and I'll listen to the scroll. I think that the scroll wheel feels great, middle mouse feels great, tactile, DPI button stays out of my way in games. The DPI button does actuate the RGB color on the G-Wolves logo in the honeycomb design. And my side clicks feel great. I don't have any issues with any significant post travel. I don't have any issues with pre-travel, just a little, little tiny bit of post travel. Um, and there is just a tiny bit of post travel on mouse one and mouse two. Um, and uh, as far as side flex, 
I've got virtually none. So I think that the uh, quality control, at least on this sample copy, is very, very good. So guys, closing thoughts on the mouse. Um, I do have a review sample, and while I might have been sent a very, very good copy, I must say that the quality control, at least on my copy, is very, very good. Overall, I think that the mouse is a well performer. I did not have any issues in games with the tracking or the sensor. I think that the quality control feels um, great. The mouse was fun to use. The only things that I could say are really cons for me on this mouse was the distribution of the weight in the mouse and the coating of the mouse. Other than that, I had a great time with the mouse. While it doesn't fit my preferences and what I want in a mouse because I like larger, my, uh, larger mice, um, I do think that this could be a number one recommendation for anybody on the market for a small mouse. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please subscribe to my boy Nacho. Come out and check out the channel over at Fresh Reviews. I've got reviews of other new wired and wireless mice, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.